So welcome everyone to <laughs> Preserving Your Photo Legacy. Uh, we are delighted to welcome Karen, uh, our photo expert and uh, owner and CEO of Karen's Photo Solutions. So if you've got photo questions, she's your go-to person. Um, I am going to turn it over to her and let her inform us and tell us all the ways that we can organize and preserve those memories. Okay, so I'm going to um, share my screen. <laughs> Michelle, can you, um, do you mind? Um, there we go. Thank you. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So, um, my um, my fancy title, Are Your Children Trapped in the Attic, is a reference to where all your photos are stored. So um, I had worked with um, Kate and Susan at the Women's Resource Center to do the presentation this month because September is Save Your Photos Month. And it was designated, uh, it's a designation that started with the photo managers group back in 2014 after there were, um, I think it was Hurricane Irene and a bunch of tornadoes in Joplin, Missouri and flooding up in Canada. And so every year in September, um, we do a lot of programs to try to educate individuals on how to save and preserve your photos. So my big question to everyone is, do you have boxes and bins of printed photos, old photo albums, digital photos on old media stashed away in different places? Um, unfortunately, I can't see the chat, but... Um, do any of these pictures look familiar to people? <laughs> the mess you might have. Or you've got digital photos on old media. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if we don't preserve our photos and their stories, they will be lost forever. And these are actually photographs that I took of um, pictures in antique stores which means that these families do not have these photos to enjoy. And I wanna tell you a brief story. I, um, I used to live in Connecticut. I moved down to North Carolina a year ago and I was working with a client up there. She volunteered part-time at a senior living residential facility. Um, and one of the things that she did was she helped families and individuals clean out apartments as the residents move to different levels. And one of the residents had passed and her son was in the apartment cleaning stuff out. And she went up to the son and she asked him, you know, what did you do with your mother's photos? Because she knew that this individual had lots of photos. And the son told her, I didn't know what to do with them. So I tossed them all in the dumpster. So she, she said she kind of lost it and had to walk out into the hallway and kind of, you know, contain herself and then walk back in because she said, I know someone that could have helped you with those photos. So what we are doing is trying to educate everyone on how to preserve their photos now so you don't run into that problem years down the road. So as I'm going through this, think about the legacy that you want to leave and leaving that through your photos and the stories that go along with those photos. So this photo on the left is my great grandparents. So it's actually, this is my grandmother down here. It's her parents. And this was at their 60th wedding anniversary. So I wasn't physically there. I had been born, but I wasn't physically there. But um, I like to look through those photos because there's wonderful memories of these two delightful individuals. And then this photo on the right-hand side, this is my mom and my dad. And apparently my mom was pregnant with me in this photo. 
And I wouldn't have known that unless I had shared that photo with my mom and she told me that story. So um, to me, that was, that's kind of cool. <laughs> so a little bit about me, who am I? Uh, like I said, I, I lived um, for many, many years in Connecticut. I'm originally from the Boston area. I moved to North Carolina a year ago, August. And I have been dubbed the family historian because since probably in middle school, I have been creating photo albums and scrapbooks. And when anybody doesn't know what to do with their photos, they send them to me and I organize and digitize them. Um, I've ha I have 20 years experience as a photo manager. And um, I, I did that part-time while I was also working full-time as a project manager at an insurance company and then for software vendors. I'm a grandmother to three children, ages seven, five, and three. And that's what brought me here to North Carolina. And I love to garden, read, go to the beach and the mountains and take walks. And so this is a photo of me up here for my sixth birthday. I am a certified with the photo managers. I'm a certified photo organizer. Um, I'm also an ambassador with uh, Forever, and I'll, I'll talk about Forever in a little bit, and a brand partner with Surround Us Services, and I'll talk about them later as well. So why do we take photos? Right down in the chat, I don't know how I'm going to be able to see the chat, but... Um, just why did you take, you know, why do you take photos? Why do you take them today? Why have you taken them in the past? What's your reason for taking photos and saving them? I don't know, Kate, as they pop up, can you read those? I will. Um, Deborah says she loves to record a memory. Anybody else? Oh, wait a minute. I figured out how I can see the chat. Um, to remember special events, how we were, and tell stories from Christine. Anybody else? Linda enjoys the creative aspect of capturing photos. And Susie captures them for memories, special occasions, and to see how times change. Kelly, record a memory and remember special events. Kathy, to help me remember occasions. So you see a theme in all these, it's to help us remember. We take the photos to help us remember because they're a physical representation of a moment in time um, that, we, that we want to remember. Whether it's, you know, grandchildren when they're younger, um, this is a group of uh, my friends, we were scrapbooking, um, my gardens, my family. Um, and sometimes we just like to take a picture just because, like my picture of the gardens. I really like, you know, the, the flowers. Um, so as we're going through this um, process, just remember why you've taken the photos so that um, and it's all about preserving that memory and the story that goes with that memory. Like this one down here of the three kids, I think there was an inch of snow here in, uh, in North Carolina this past February. And the kids had to go out in their snowsuits <laughs> and make snowmen. <laughs> it's just precious. So th the photos are a physical representation of our memories. And um, this is a picture of myself and my sister standing in front of my grandma, my grandparents' house because we lived with them for a while. And this brings back really nice memories uh, that I have of that house and the time we spent living there. And it lives in the stories that uh, are told through our photographs. So what is the story that you want to tell, that you want your photographs to tell? So think about that. Um, that's, as, as I get into the, the organizing process, that's the first step, is why are we going to organize and what do we want to share and preserve? 
So where are your photos? Do you know where they are? <laughs> Do you have them stashed away in a basement, in a closet, in old photo albums? Um, and did you know that humidity can really damage your photos? Um, for those of us that live in humid climates, if we want to preserve our printed photos, we need to make sure that they're stored in a climate controlled area. You don't wanna store them in the attic, you don't want to store them in a basement and you definitely don't want to store them in a garage or a shed in the backyard. But your your no matter what your photos are susceptible especially your print even your digital photos depending on where they're stored are susceptible to a disaster and we have seen in this country our share of disasters over the last year between fires and floods and tornadoes. And, you know, I, I hear, I was listening to stories of people up in the Northeast in New Jersey, and they say the water came up so fast, they had no chance to evacuate, to gather their stuff that was stored in the basement. So it's really important that whatever printed photos that you have, the best way to preserve them is to digitize them. And I'm gonna talk about that in a couple minutes. So like I said, what is the vision that you have for your photos? How do you want to be remembered? Um, what is the stories that you want to tell and that you want to have people remember? So I'm gonna walk through my uh, four-step process for how I work with my clients. Um, it's uh, hopefully you'll gain uh, some insight as to what to do with your photos, but the four steps involve planning, organizing, preserving, and then sharing. So the first part is a plan, as I mentioned earlier. Before you do anything, you wanna think about what it is that you want to do with your photos. What, um, what is your goal? What, what do you want done with them? After, do you want to create books? Like I heard one, uh, I guess it was Michelle was talking about doing something for her daughter's wedding or bridal shower. Um, do you wanna make a book? Do you want to have um, gifts to give to people? Are you trying to, are you celebrating a significant birthday or an anniversary, uh, someone graduating from high school or college, um, putting together a family history book? Think about that and set your goal. And even if you've got multiple things you want to do, put it down in a plan. Like I said, I was a project manager. <laughs> Um, don't try to tackle everything at once. Because I always like to tell everyone, you can only eat an elephant one bite at a time. So think about what you want to do and set it up in um, phases and projects. And when you're done with one phase or one small piece, celebrate. Um, because yes, it could, it, the whole project could be seem totally overwhelming, especially if you've got multiple boxes and bins scanned, scared all over the place. So after you've made your plan, the next thing I recommend you do is creating uh, timelines, individual or family timelines. And you can do this on a piece of paper, you could do it in Excel spreadsheet, um, but you know, write down all the years and then the name of the person, what year they were born, and key events or milestones. This is when they started kindergarten. This is when we went on our first vacation to Disney World. This is when we, I don't know, um, took a trip cross country. This is when so-and-so graduated college because if you want to put your photos together in some kind of chronological or subject matter order, it helps if you've created this timeline ahead of time. You can always keep updating it as you remember things, as you find photos that might trigger a memory, but it's a really good place to start. 
And then what you want to do is you want to, what we call the hunt and gather <laughs> phase. Hunt down everywhere that you've got photos, whether they're in albums, um, here's a box of slides, they might be in frames, they might be in envelopes. Um, and don't forget about your videos, your DVDs, check everywhere, the closet, the basement, the cabinet over here, the under the bed, um, and also the memorabilia, because uh, it's really important that you also preserve the memorabilia that go along with the photos. And then you wanna gather your tools. And this is a list of tools that I use, um, photo labeling pencil, that's to, if you want to write some notes on the back of the photos, I do not recommend using a ballpoint pen because that can emboss through and um, it may not be photo safe. I use index cards to separate and categorize the photos as I'm going through them. Dental floss, people ask me, why do you, what, what can you do with dental floss? Do you remember those old, from the 70s and 80s, we had those sticky albums. <laughs> when you go to try to pull the photos out of the albums, sometimes they really stick. <laughs> so dental floss, if you use a piece of dental floss, it helps you lift the photo out of, uh, off the page. Envelopes are good for temporary storage of uh, your photos. Um, temporary boxes, I like to use those decorative shoe boxes that you can by at Michael's. But then for any photos, printed photos that you want to preserve and save, I recommend putting them into archival safe boxes. And one of the companies that I use that I recommend is Archival Methods. Uh, they're located in Rochester, New York, and they that's all they do is create archival safe storage for photos and memorabilia and documents. So then the next step is sorting and organizing. So um, as you're going through this process of sorting and organizing, keep in mind what we call the ABCs of photo organizing. A stands for album. These are the photos that you know that you probably want to put into an album at some point. B is for box and backup. These are the photos that you want to keep. You're going to store them in a box or you're going to digitize them. C is uh, for the can and trash can. And in a second, I have a slide to talk about um, which photos you want, you might want to save and which ones are okay to trash. And then S is for the story. And recording the story is really important. And that's another use for the index cards, because if you store, you write a story down, even if it's just the who, what, when, where, um, you can store that index card with the photos and you can digitize that index card too when you digitize the photos. And when, um, then what you want to do is decide how you want to sort your photos. What categories do you want to do, use? Do you want to do it by date? Do you want to do it by event or by holiday? Um, vacations, places you like to go. I start off, and, and this is my personal preference, but everybody is different. I start off at the high level with a date, and then I might put an event like so-and-so's birthday, or the vacation we took to Williamsburg, or um, you know, some special event or uh, that might be going on. So that's, that's how I do it. And if you don't know the exact date, you can kind of round it off to the approximate year or even approximate decade. And like I said, again, you wanna make sure that you, you tell the story. Um, too many times I see people create photo books that are just, photos. And I always used to tell people when I was teaching scrapbooking, you want to be able to write enough that you can hand the book to someone and you don't have to sit next to them narrating it. Because someday you will not be there to narrate it. 
So you want to make sure that you um, you record the who, what, when, and where, and any anecdotes that you might have related to the photo or groups of photos. So reasons you want to keep a photo because it evokes an emotion. It tells a story. Maybe it's um, <clears throat> the house you grew up in or the house when your parents first bought it or your grandparents first bought their house before they did any landscaping or renovations or additions. Um, if the photo has some kind of historical significance. If it's the photo of something or someone that's important to you or someone or something that you want to remember. Um, again, it's your choice as to which photos you keep, um, but remember there's a cost to every, everything, every photo that you save either in storage or digi digitizing. Which photos do you want to toss? Well, duplicates. I mean, remember years ago when we sent our film off to be developed, we would get a free extra set of prints. And then we'd save them because we thought we were going to give them to the grandparents and then we never did. So they're still sitting in the envelope. The photos are blurry. Um, you've got multiple scenery photos of the same view. Yes, the Grand Canyon is gorgeous, but the Grand Canyon has been around for, I don't know, five million years. And it really hasn't changed that much. <laughs> um, for example, I went on a trip when I was in high school, the first time I went to the Grand Canyon, and then almost, well, more than maybe 40-ish years later, I went with my husband to the Grand Canyon. I compared my photos from the two trips, and other than the fact that the old ones were a little yellow, they looked exactly the same. So, um, you know, keep the photo, obviously, if it has a, someone in it, but you don't need, you know, 10 photos of the beautiful view of the Grand Canyon because what, what one photo manager said to me, um, she says, well, if you can look it up on Google, then why do you need a picture of it? <laughs> um, you want to toss it if you can't remember who's in the photo. I was just working with a client. Uh, her mom did a lot of uh, traveling. She went on group trips and she took photos of the people that she traveled with. and you know, she never saw those people again. So it's like, why bother to keep those photos um, if it's not somebody that has a special meaning to you? And then the photo doesn't bring you joy. So why, so it's another reason that you can toss it. One thing to remember when you're throwing out photos, they are not recyclable because of the chemicals that we use in the development process. So they have to be put into a trash bag and thrown out in the trash. So the next step, now you've, you've got everything sorted and organized, so now you want to preserve it. And um, our, this is an example of an archival safe box where the photos are nicely labeled. These are labeled chronologically and then by subject. So again, if you want to save the photos, I recommend that you put them in an archival safe box so that it stops any further deterioration, but that you also keep the box high up. Don't put the boxes in the basement. Don't leave the boxes sitting on the living room floor. Put them on a bookcase, a bookshelf, um, because again, if something happens, you know, they could be destroyed. I, um, one of the things I was talking to someone recently about, you know, the, the floods and she was having to go, it's an organizer up in Connecticut and she was going to help someone clean out their ho house after a flood. And I told her, I said, if she's got photos that have gotten wet, they can be dried out and then you can digitize them so you don't have to throw them away. You just have to be real careful when you're handling them because of mold and mildew and the chemical reactions to water. So why do you want to digitize your photos? Um, number one, it's a better way to preserve them. Uh, less clutter, they don't take up as much space. 
and it's easier to share. So you can put your um, digital photos can be stored on a, on a flash drive or an external hard drive and out in um, secure cloud storage. If you are going to be scanning your photos yourself, uh, these are some things to, to avoid. Um, not organizing your photos first. This is a mistake. You want to make sure that you organize your photos before you digitize them because otherwise you're going to wind up with a digital mess and then you'll have to figure out how to organize those digital photos. You want to make sure that you're scanning them at the right DPI, an appropriate DPI. I scan all my photos at 600 DPI and that way, if somebody wants to eventually, you know, like download and reprint the photo, it's not going to um, lose its um, um, what do you call it? I forgot the word, the right word, it's but it's integrity. It, yeah, it's integrity. So you want to make sure that you um, it takes it takes a couple seconds longer to digitize them at 600, but um, you get better quality photo that way. And then also not capturing the story is another mistake that people make. One of the things I wanna, I wanna talk about is the difference between syncing and backup. I, um, I talk to people and they say, oh, all my, my, my photos are on my phone and they're backed up on iCloud. Well, basically iCloud is syncing. It's a two-way communication. It's matching between the two devices. So if you delete it in one place, it deletes it in the other place. A backup is a one-way communication. It's a full copy to another source. And that way, let's say you back up your photos to um, a, a reputable cloud storage, you can delete them off your phone so they're not taking up as much space on your phone but you know you, you have the copy out there in the cloud storage. <clears throat> so for backing up, the photo managers recommend what we call a 3-2-1 backup, which means you have three copies of your digital data stored on two different media or devices, and one copy is located off-site. So three copies, you could have it on an external hard drive, you can have it on your computer, and you can have it out in the cloud. And that would mean you've got it on at least two different devices and media, and the one copy offsite is the cloud storage, or what some people do is they make a complete backup onto an external hard drive, and they give it to a family member or a neighbor to store. Backup options. I use Backblaze. Um, I pay, I think it's $60 a year to back up um, my computer and it backs up everything. It backs up not only my photos, but all the documents I have in my computer. And if you have a hard drive plugged in, it'll back up that hard drive for no extra cost. And again, another story, um, a year ago, April, my husband passed away. And because of COVID, we weren't able to have his funeral until June. And I was working on creating uh, memory boards uh, for the funeral. And I had uh, digitized all of his photos and I was creating them digitally. And I, was, I sent them off to Staples to be printed. Well, I decided that I want to make changes to a couple of them. And to, I plugged my external hard drive in that had the um, digital boards that I had made and my hard drive would not boot up. The hard drive crashed. And I was like in major panic mode until I remembered, wait a minute, I have all my stuff backed up to um, Backblaze. So I went into my account it took a couple of days, but I was able to retrieve all of my data that was on my hard drive, including um, those photos. So I was so grateful that I had spent my $60 that year. 
Uh, Forever is another um, cloud storage option. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute as well. So um, I'm just gonna briefly, most of the stuff I've been talking about is uh, your printed analog photos, but I wanna talk a little bit about digital photos. And um, when you're working with your digital photos, you've got them on different media, different devices. Um, the first thing you wanna do is consolidate them. You wanna look for, do you have them on an old DVD? Do you have them on an old camera card? Do you have them on an old flash drive? <clears throat> and what you want to do is consolidate them all onto what we call a digital hub, which in most cases is a separate external hard drive. And then you want to work with the photos there. You don't want to work with them on the original source. And then the next thing you want to do is um, deduplication. And then you can organize and then you set up a maintenance policy. Um, I work with this company called Surround Us Services that um, helps my clients do all the organizing of their digital photos. And it just makes it so much easier. I actually sent all my stuff to them as well. Because <laughs> I, um, I chose not to do the digital organizing because I'm a PC person, I'm not a Mac person, and a lot of people have Macs and they have stuff on their iPhones, which I did as well. And so I just find it easier to give it to someone who understands those um, applications and those systems. But a couple of digital organizing tips. When um, I recommend to people that you sit down when you're in the car waiting or waiting for an appointment or watching TV, go through your phone once a month, set a reminder and uh, delete those screenshots that you took of something you wanted to remember to buy or selfies just for the fun of it or almost duplicates or those multiple scenery. And then um, I, this, is, this is from my iPhone. I, assume that they have something similar on an Android. But if you go into your albums on your iPhone and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see something that says recently deleted. Just deleting the photos from your phone doesn't permanently delete them off your phone. They're still there. So you have to um, click here which says recently deleted and delete them from there and that will free up the space on your phone. Because if you, if you think, you say, oh my gosh, I've been deleting photos. Why does it still say I don't have enough storage? That's why, because you didn't click the recently de deleted. The other fun thing to do is to create albums on your phone. Um, one of the albums I, uh, I was building a house here in North Carolina and I took photos every week <laughs> of the process and I put them all into an album. And then when the house was done and I moved in, I was actually able to create a physical album of the process of building my house. And it made it so much easier. Excuse me, I need to take... Mm -hmm some water. <clears throat> okay, so the last step is the sharing. You've gone through all this process, sort and organize and digitize your photos. Now what? Well, it's all about sharing. And that's with uh, photo books. I do help my clients create photo books. I'm actually helping one client right now. She's creating a combination poetry photo book um, for her mom. Uh, her mom beautiful poet, um, but she's now suffering from dementia. She's in assisted living. So my client collected all of her mom's uh, poems, had them transcribed, and we're interlacing the pages with the poems and photos of her mom. So it's a special memento for everybody. Digital photo frames are a great way to share your photos. And the nice thing now is these digital photos, 
photo frames are Wi-Fi enabled. So what I did a year ago, I sent my mom's in California at the time I was in, um, well, actually it's two years ago now, I was in Connecticut and she was constantly asking me to send her photos of the great grandkids. So I would email them to her. She would print them on a piece of paper or I would have to send them to the Walgreens near her house and have them printed there. So what I did is I bought her a digital photo frame for Mother's Day and all I have to do is go to, I load, downloaded the app on my phone and I can put the photos um, into the Nix Play app on my phone and she can see them on her frame in California. So it's a really nice gift for grandparents. Of course, there's wall art, um, video montages that some of you are making and then um, private online sharing uh, through forever. And so that brings me to forever. I love forever. That's the name of the company. And basically it's a place to keep your photos and documents forever. It's the only company that I know that guarantees access to your photos um, for your lifetime plus 100 years. And they do that because you purchase the, the storage, the amount of storage that you need, and it's a one-time purchase. It's not a subscription. I mean, you could always buy additional storage if you need it, um, but it's yours. And they, part of the money that um, you, you, that's uh, paid into forever goes into this guarantee fund. And that's how they guarantee access to your photos. And what that means is, let's say, you know, five, 10 years from now, technology changes and how we access our photos is gonna change. Well, we're not gonna to have to go through another conversion process. They will do the conversion for us so that we have access to our photos. So this is actually a picture of my storage account. And um, I have albums broken down into albums, into albums. Uh, I have a, al I used to be, um, I used to create a lot of scrapbooks with creative memories and I just had them all digitized and they're stored here. And I did annual albums and my husband and I took a lot of vacations to Key West and to Cape Cod, Massachusetts, but they were separated each vacation by year. So now that I've gotten all those pages digitized, I'm gonna create an album of just our vacations to Key West and just our vacations to Cape Cod. So that's um, one nice way of uh, preserving the photos. And you, these photos that you're, it's private. You own the storage. It's triple um, backed up. Um, they have data centers, three different places. So it's triple backed up and you can access your photo, photos from anywhere on any device. Like if I could show you my phone, I could show you that I can access all these photos here on the screen. And it's shareable. You can decide who you wanna share your photos with and you could set up an account manager. So that person has access to your account if God forbid something should happen to you. And you don't have to go through any legal rigmarole um, for that person to access your photos. Also, what I like about, whoops, went the wrong way, is um, you can create lots of photo gifts. And I've created um, calendars for my grandchildren. I've created books. I've created um, one year for my daughter's anniversary. I created a beautiful photo plaque for them. Um, so it's, it's fun to create your own photo books. You could cre even create um, for, the, for the weddings that are coming up, you can create um, favors or things to put on the tables of pictures of the bride and groom. Forever also does media conversion. What I mean by media conversion is slides, movies, VHS tapes, that kind of stuff. I, I personally don't do it and I've sent all my slides to um, Forever. 
And so down here at the bottom of the screen, there's a link where if you want, you could get a free two, two gigabyte account. So you could try it, no obligation. You don't have to pay for anything. And um, they'll send you a, an email to verify your email address. And when you do that, you get a $20 gift certificate that you can use on anything. So if you wanna you know, create a, a mug as a gift for someone, basically the mug, the cost of the mug would be free with that $20 gift certificate. So I, um, I really like Love Forever. So back to Save Your Photos Month. This is the link. Um, even though we're nine days into September, you can still register and you can still get access to all these mini courses. Um, it's www.saveyourphotos.org. And like I said, the courses are available to you as soon as you register, they're on demand. And then every Wednesday, in addition to the 40 mini courses, every Wednesday, I think it's at one o'clock Eastern, there's live Q&A sessions with um, professional photo organizers and other industry experts. I think, um, Christine, you're on this call. I think you were on the one yesterday. Um, you're also gonna get a link to um, this really interesting documentary called Lives Well Lived. And you'll be entered um, to win more than two, $2,200 worth of prizes donated by the sponsors. So it's free, no cost. I get nothing from it. And I highly recommend that you um, check out some of these mini courses because, the, and I know most of the people, I've been a member of the photo manager since its inception over 10 years ago. And the people who have done these courses are definitely experts in their field. So before we go, um, I just want to, this is, um, it's a longer poem. I don't, I, I was given a copy of this poem maybe 15, 18 years ago. I don't know who wrote it, but it's titled Treasures in a Box. And this is the last stanza from that um, poem. And I'll read it out loud. Make time to save your precious pictures. Seize the opportunity when it knocks. Or someday you and yours will be the strangers in the box. So I leave you with that little poem. Um, if you wanna go out to my website, I have this free photo organizing starter guide with um, tips to help you get started. Some of which I talked about in today's presentation. But um, I'm happy to take some questions from people. This is my contact information. You can, if you want to set up a private call, there's a link on my website to do that. Um, but I'll stop sharing and see if people have some questions. Any questions? Either put them in the chat or raise your hand. <laughs> and then unmute yourself. I have a question. Linda? Yes, is there any particular scanner that you would recommend for digitizing paper photos? Um, well, I, I use a Kodak scanner that unfortunately they don't make anymore, but Epson makes a good photo scanner. Um, if, if you saw the picture, of the scanner that I had on my on one of my slides. It's not a mm -hmm. flatbed. It's a, um, you know, you can- Feeder? Yeah, feeder. And I, I don't know what the latest number, I don't know if it's a 650 or an 850. Um, and I know they run somewhere around the six, $700 range. I have a- I have an uh, Epson ES400 is what I've been using and it'll do a 600 DPI and it's it's working pretty good. And it's yeah. just exactly like the one you had where it feeds and comes back up. Yeah, the uh, Epson. I, don't think I, I think I paid about three or 400 for it. I don't think it was that much. 
Did you get it recently or a few years ago? Um, had it about a year. Oh, okay, yeah. The ES400? ES400. But I know there's one that's got a higher number that Epson actually worked with uh, photo managers on the requirements that we have for um, how we want to categorize and label photos and and store them. So it's it's got a higher number, but if you're having good use with the 450, then great. <laughs> I mean, Thank yeah. you. Usually the higher number just means it's a new iteration. Yeah. With a newer software. Features. Yeah. 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 Well, Kathy popped a question in the chat. If slides were stored in a basement and got moldy, are they permanently ruined? Um, not necessarily. They, um, if you can hold them up to the to the light and you can see something, there are ways that um, they can be cleaned, but it um, it may damage them. I know with movies if they start to smell like vinegar then they're not good anymore um, <clears throat> but yeah you have to be really careful when stuff gets moldy especially handling it I make sure if you're touching them you're wearing cotton gloves or <coughs> nitrile gloves because you, you don't want that getting on your hands and Susie asked if you could go over the three, two, one storage process again. Sure, I will um, I'll go backwards on bringing up that slide. Let's see if I can, oh, where'd it go? Oops, hang on. I'll get back to you in a second here. <laughs> Here we go. So it's three copies of digital data on two different media or devices and one copy located offsite. You wanna take a screenshot or something? Anything else? Well, I have a question. Go uh, for it. <laughs> you mentioned uh, a photo pencil. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain one you would recommend? Because that was a new thing for me. I purchased my photo labeling pencils from Archival Methods. It's called the Stab Stabio, I think is the brand. Um, but I or something like that, but I get them from archival methods. Basically, it's a soft leaded pencil so that you're not embossing on the back of the photo. And you can um, buy it by, I, I think they only sell them in a box of 12. <laughs> so let's see, Susie asks, so we want three digital copies on each device? No. No, you want um, you want three digital copies on different devices or media. So you have one copy on an external hard drive, another copy out in cloud storage, and maybe another copy on your computer. And then Christine wanted to know any guess as to how many terabytes needed for say twenty thousand photos. Um, I'll I. I can't guess because for digital photos, it depends on the size of them. But for physical photos, the rule of thumb is one inch equals a hundred photos. Um, <laughs> but um, 20,000, I know with, you could probably get 20,000 photos on, um, it might take a hundred gigabytes of storage. 
because I have almost 10,000 digital photos in my forever account. I have a 50 gig account and it's, they're taking up 62% of my storage. Ooh, you're asking us to do math. Ooh. No, but I'm saying I have 10,000 and it's taking up a little, little bit over a half of the 50 gigabytes. So 20,000, you might be able to get away with 50 gigabyte, but I don't know for sure. Um, Lee wants to know, can you pay someone to digitize your photos if you don't have the patience to do it yourself? Yes, that's what I do. <laughs> I do that, or you can also send them to um, a place like Forever to do it for you, also depending on where you live. But if you're anywhere near me in North Carolina, I'd be happy to help. <laughs> Uh, and Linda asks, can you store sensitive documents such as wills and insurance policies on forever? Yes, I have done that. I have, I have a, because I designated a folder as private, which means only myself and my account manager, who's my daughter, can see them. And I have put all my um, personal documents, my will, my power of attorney, my living will, medical directive, I put those all out on forever. Um, Susie asked, could you share how much they charge? Or no, you charge, sorry. Didn't share how much <laughs> you charge. It, um, for, I, well, for the uh, digitizing, I charge by the hour and it did, um, and I do it in packages. Um, but I usually, for a digitizing, it's about $50 an hour. If they're organized. If they're not organized, it'll cost you more to, for my time to organize them or to work with you to organize them. So thank you. Yeah, I can see the, the so chat now. Organizing the digital stuff, does that go back to date, event, et cetera, for all of that? Yes. When, so um, you say your question again, Christine. You said that um, when you digitize, I need to be, or to, to save money, we need to be organized first. Uh -huh. So I guess to me, that is the the place of overwhelm is that, you know, software has changed over the years. So I used to have photos in Aperture and then I had them in Photos and then I had them in, you know, all different kinds of um, software. And I'm sure there's a million duplicates. And at one point I sent them out to be um, digitized by a company that digitized them all. They were all labeled with post-it notes as to what date they were. And then they came into my system all having a date that was scanned rather than the original date. And yeah. It's like a major, major, major mess. And, and I must have 70,000 uh, digital images. So I'm, I'm in total, um, like I really want to do this, but the idea of, I don't, like I have no idea how to get them out. So were the were the photos paper or were they actually on different digital media? A lot of them were on different digital media, and I got back the digital media. So those could be probably re-entered. They could be reorganized, yeah. So like the company Surround Us Services, what they do is they organize them chronologically based on the digital date. So if you have the original media, um, they could definitely work with those to consolidate and, and organ and organ de deduplicate and organize them. Um, but if for your printed photos, did you no, have I'm those? I'm mostly concerned about the digital. I think yeah. I can handle the printed. Yeah, they can, if you've got the original media, they can they can um, they can work with that and maintain the original digital date. And is it better to have them do it or forever? Because as you know, I have no have them do it. No, 
Yeah, they forever doesn't do that. Forever digitizes printed photos, but they don't organize digital photos. So Surround Us Services would be the company that I would recommend to, to do that. Okay, thank you. Um, I see a question from Kathy about negatives. Um, if I don't, me personally, I don't save the negatives uh, because I know that I've printed everything from the negatives. I may have saved them years ago to make, you know, make additional copies for people, but I personally don't save the negatives. Um, and if you know the, um, if you know you have the photos from all the negatives, then there's, I don't see any reason to save them, but it's a personal choice. When you're digitizing the index card that has the story, how do you link it to the photos? Well, you, when it's stored with the photos, like I just did that for my sister's photos. She had stuff written on the back of the photo. And so I digitized the front and the back. And then after I uploaded everything into Forever, I looked for those um, images of the back with the description. And I added that description to the photo in Forever. And then I deleted the image of the back of the photo. So, so, did you, so did you have, did you write on the back of each thing? No, she had written on it previously. Okay, so mine don't have anything written on the back. So most of them don't even have dates on the back. Mm -hmm. but, so if I were going to try to organize them by event, let's say I might need the index card for that. Right. And then, Would I also need to write on the back? No, not at all. No. If you put, if you use the index card, so what I usually do with my clients after I've organized the photos, whatever is on that divider card for the group of photos, that's the label I put on the file folder when I scan it. So if the card said 2020-12-Christmas, uh, the file folder that I did that I scan the photos into also says 2020-12-Christmas. And where's that file? That's the digital file. And, and every single one of those photos also has that it's name It's in on the it. digital file that's on your device, but not in, in forever. But then I move it into forever. I create in the, the album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, Kathleen, Catherine had to leave. Um, Linda asks, what's the best way to digitize very old, oversized photos printed on hard paper? Like what size? Uh, 18 by something or other? Uh, no, they're, um, they're odd sizes. They're usually like maybe eight by 12 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. We have some large ones, but well, I, I've already taken some pictures of old large ones and that were crumbling and I got rid of those. But um, if you have a flatbed scanner, I would, um, that's what I would use. I use for those big photos is a flatbed scanner. So what if they're curling up? Um, well, you know, if they've, they've not been stored well and they're, well, if you put them, if you put them down on a, well, first of all, you can try to flatten them uh, by putting them under a bunch of books. But when you put it on the, the scanner, if they're curled, you might want to put little pieces of tape on the end to hold them down before you put the cover on the scanner. It's really hard stuff. It's like if you try to flatten it, it's going to crumble. Um, almost like... Hmm. Oh, they've, been, they've been rolled up and they kind of got no they haven't they're just flat but they've <laughs> I guess they've gotten humid or damp and mm -hmm. just gotten uneven um, yeah I mean and bowed in the center and curled at the edges 
<laughs> so I took a cell phone photo of some, of one very large one that mm -hmm. I'm not sure who it is, but I know it's a family member. So yeah, I wanted to keep it. Um, well, yeah, that I mean, I are, did. I do that with memorabilia. Um, if I can't. If I can't fit it on the flatbed scanner, because, um, like for example, my my daughter had all her she played varsity sports in high school, and so I I put her letter all the different letters on the table, and I took a picture of them, and then I threw them away, <laughs> mm -hmm. and then I you know I store the digital photo with the rest of her digital photos in forever. So that's a, a re that's a reasonable thing to do. It's like a mm -hmm. like a cell phone picture, and then you have a digital copy, right? And you know, try to obviously you know, light can play tricks when you're using your um, your cell phone. So make sure the picture is like on a dark surface, and you don't have any overhead light shining down on it. You want indirect light, so exactly. you don't get the glare. Okay, thank you. Yep. Karen, I have a question. Mm -hmm. The pictures you showed in the PowerPoint were beautiful. The ones that, you know, of you when you were a child and of your parents, like how did you get that good quality out of those older pictures? They were actually slides. Ah, ah, yes. They were, they were my grandfather's slides that I had digitized. Okay, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> so slides so like I have slides of like my parents have tons of slides mm -hmm. so though, just because it's a negative essentially right it's going to make a good quality picture still yeah interesting okay yeah all right yeah because I don't want to tell you how I don't want to tell you how old those pictures are yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and does anybody still scrapbook I mean uh, like it doesn't seem like there's still like a lot of people still scrapbooking and I still scrapbook. No, there uh, are. It's, really it's in, yeah. There, it's interesting because I'm still a creative memories advisor uh -huh. and there are still a lot of people that are doing the traditional paper scrapbooking. And then there are a lot of people who are doing it, um, digitally with this software from forever that's called Artisan. I mean, that's how I make all my books now is using that software, the Artisan software. Okay. Um, I've, I've stopped doing the, the paper scrapbooks because what happened was when I, last year when I was packing to move, my scrapbook albums took up six boxes, six moving boxes, and they were heavy. <laughs> And, and then I had to store them. I mean, I had to, I had to pay extra for climate controlled storage down here when my house was being built. <laughs> and so I made the decision to get all of those digit. That's why I made the decision to get them digitized because I had to get, I had to buy an extra bookcase to store them in. So I've slowly been getting them all digitized and I only do the digital out you know I create the my books digitally now and have printed and they take up much less space. right right and so when you got your scrapbooks digitized did you create a book of those scrapbooks I mean did you recreate another digitized book or did you just get them no I haven't done I haven't done that yet like I mentioned I'm waiting to get all of them finished I just sent the last box in this week to forever. And then I'm going to create a separate book of the pages from all of our different trips to Cape Cod over the years and all our different trips to Key West. Um, I may also do one. I took a lot of pictures. We had this beautiful yard in Connecticut. We had over seven acres and my husband and I did a lot of gardening. So I may decide to do a small book of just my gardens. You know, that's neat. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. I've learned a lot. You're welcome. Um, Linda, the, the best way to preserve an old album with photos and handwritten descriptions 
I'm doing that for a client now. I'm taking those pages and having forever digitized the whole page. It's just like working with an old scrapbook um, because you want to keep you want to keep the handwriting from the person. No, right, forever so does that... forever doesn't organize photos. You have to organize them first. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they but just assemble the albums and, yeah. and digitize the pages in order. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's the best way to do it because then you still have the the notes from the person who yeah. originally wrote it. Yeah. You maintain in the you know, it's funny when I used to teach those scrapbooking classes and I tell people to write the story, annotate the pictures, and they say, Well, I hate my handwriting. I said, yeah, but someday that's how somebody's going to remember you is by your handwriting. I mean, my grandmother had the craziest handwriting, but I always knew when I got a letter from her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you say they have a particular program on their site? I'm sorry, I was writing a question when you told Laura about the scrapbooking. Oh, yes, there's a software that's, there's software called Artisan. Artisan. But um, they also have templates with they call um, auto print, where you just drag and drop the photos in. Surround Us Services, yes, they organize the digital photos. Well, this has been perfect. My dog just finished the bone I gave her to chew on. <laughs> and now she's hiding in her crate. <laughs> oh, here she comes, because you heard me mention her name. Did anyone else have any other questions? Well, I had one I put in there and didn't um, get to ask. Is, uh, Karen, after you digitize your albums and you get them back, the stuff back from um, forever, do you put it back in the album and keep the album or get rid of it? No. So far, I've, I've thrown away the album covers. I've still kept the pages. I haven't, I haven't um, been able to throw the pages away yet, but um, <laughs> they're all sitting in boxes. <laughs> That's sort of what I'm doing, but it, I look at it takes a bunch of space, and I'm not sure why I need them, but. I, I don't either. I'm sure they're gonna they're gonna get tossed eventually. But instead of six boxes, I think they're sitting in one and a half forever boxes right now. <laughs> well, Karen, thank you so much for all this information. Um, I popped your information in the chat a couple of times, so people can visit your website and hit you with any questions that come up at the last minute. <laughs>